clerical regime has made no secret of its commitment to an extremist agenda. I do see lots in the media and in other places what harsh people, what fanatical people Iranians are. As a Westerner, many people ask me how that was to live in Iran for a while, and if I was scared to go, and if I had a hard time, if it was um, constant chaos and turmoil. And I found that it was just the opposite. People were so friendly, they um, were very loving. I never really had any negative experiences the whole time I was there. In a place where we think is very dark and gloomy and hopeless, you'll find much joy among the people there. They're waiting for someone just to sit with them and tell them the truth. This is a critical point in history for the Iranian people. The Iranian are spread everywhere, you know, in Turkey, in Pakistan, India. Many of them came to Jesus in these countries and there are great opportunities really for Christians to go to these countries and reach out to these people. I have come myself from Turkey and I know really what's happening there. That was my experience that this Christian's presence in that country changed the life of a person like me who was a radical Muslim and you know, didn't know about Christianity and took Christianity as an evil religion. So that's why God is doing in an amazing, you know, working in an amazing way there among Iranian people. I'm on my way to Turkey for a research project. It's estimated that at least 800,000 Iranians are living in Turkey, and many of these are refugees. My goal is to meet these people for myself and gain a better understanding of who they are. I'm hoping that somehow I can make a difference while I'm here, but it's easy to feel lost and insignificant in a place like this. I've been able to meet Mohammed, an Iranian believer working here in Turkey, who cares a lot about his country and people. People may ask what difference they can make as just one person. You may think we are nobody, but it doesn't matter who we are. The main thing is who he is. This is me. For 15 years, I prayed for this man. After 15 years, he became Christian. Then within a few months, his wife became a Christian. And then, not long after, his brother became Christian. Then another brother became Christian. Then his wife became Christian. Their other sister became Christian. Then uh, some other cousin became Christian. Another cousin again became Christian. And then their friends became Christian. And now they all have a church. I believe in uh, the story of Lazarus and a rich man that when both of them were, were dead, the rich man asked Lazarus for the help. I don't want, when I die, I see people in hell that I can recognize them. And if, if they ask me, you could share with me, but you didn't. Uh, life in heaven is going to be hard. I know we won't have pain, we won't have sorrow, but to recognize those people, friends, my family, my relatives, my co-workers, other people, oh, it's going to be hard. I am overwhelmed by all that I see I feel so unprepared in the face of such need What do I have to offer? How can I make a change? I was introduced to Poria, a young Iranian who spent half of his life in Turkey. He was extremely open with me from the beginning about his struggles, his hopes, and his plans for the future. His family is one of the thousands that left Iran seeking refuge in surrounding nations. And just one voice can change the nation's course And just one life can shake this world For just one hope we live and die, Lord, you
I was so blown away by his family's generosity and hospitality, in spite of not having much themselves and struggling to meet their daily needs. من عظیم هستم در سال 1999 به ترکیه اومدیم خاک ترکیه وارش که به شهر آقری اومدیم چون روی مشکلاتی که در ایران داشتم خانوادم درگیرش شده بودن خواهر برادرم و باعث شد که برای ما برنامه پیش بیاد و ما هم از ایران خارجیم و اونجا مدت 18 ما بودش که در شهر آخری ترکیه زندگی کردیم با شرط خیلی سختی و مشکلاتی که واقعا در اون شهر بود و نبود امکانات و تردد معمولین ایران به اونجا بودش و دیدم که واقعا زندگیم پاچیده شد جدا شدم از شوهرم به خودم اومدم گفتم وای چی کار کردم من ولی باید برم تا تش و در همون حین زمان ها بود که ما رفتیم توی کاستامانا یکی از بچه ها به ما گفتش که کلیسایی توی آنکارا هست که کمک میکنه شما شاید حتی اونایی که پرونده بستن و بتونه بفرسته بره خارج They were worshiping God with guitar and they're happy, they're singing for God. And I was like, in Muslim, they don't do that. And that was very interesting for me. And really, God touched me and my mom's heart, so we became Christian in this church, Iranian Fellowship. And I thank God for the Lord that my brother was from Istanbul to the city of Kastamonu. متقل کرده بود به نام بردر بیژن بعد زمان من با بردر بیژن که هر روز می اومد منزلمون با هم مشارکت داشتیم و اینا خب حرکات بردر بیژن واقعا رو من خیلی تاثیر گذاشت و کتاب مقدس رو که شروع کردم به خوندن خب شروع کردم به, به گفته های کتاب مقدس عمل کردم و قلبم رو دادم به عیسی مسیح بعد از بیشتر گفت یک کلیسه خانگی را بندازیم. بعد ما با ایرانی که در ارتباط بودیم هر روز بعد می رفتیم امضا می کردیم پلیس. بعد یه باش یه باش دیگرانم که خوب مشکلاتی که با اونجا درگیر بودن اینا. We were three people when we start the church and so we became thirty people after that. It was very amazing because it was. God's spirit every time we be in our, you know, church. When people comes from another city, they like this is like the old church in the Bible that's talking about. We would have a really long time worship, and we would start like at 12 o'clock after we ate our lunch. We would start worship until like 11 o'clock at night. It was amazing, really amazing. This family has gone through so many hardships. They left their familiar language, their friends, and their home. And not too long ago, Poira lost his twin brother. Yet in spite of all of this, they haven't lost their faith. I'm afraid that my God is my friend. و از ما استفاده میکنه و ما رو قابل میدونه که ما ابسری در دستان اون باشیم I want people to pray for Iran and Iranian people that their life would change and they would know God, Jesus One day, uh, in, in this land, uh, we are asked to speak in a church uh, that's from a neighboring land, which happened to be Persia. And uh, it's a Persian church, and so uh, we, we spoke at that church, and I was standing with the pastor uh, during worship time. Uh, he leaned over to me and said, uh, do you know what's going on in our land? And I said, well, um, well, not really, because I, I was thinking he was talking about all the bad news. And he said, uh, no, 
I'm speaking about revival. He said, the church is growing right now so quickly. And it, uh, he said, but not many people know about it. But he then said, look around you. Look, look here all around you. He said, and what really struck me was uh, uh, that almost all of them had a, a vision to go to Persia as missionaries, to, to go to Afghanistan, to go to the further places all around there. And uh, again, it's something that we just didn't expect. I came from a place where the media often portrays these people as Muslim extremists. But what I see in this family are genuine people seeking out the truth. It's been a lot of fun getting to hang out with them this past month. I feel so privileged to have met this family and to have heard their story firsthand. God has put such a resilience in them. They keep going in spite of all that comes against them. When I look at the freedom in this family and the impact that they've had in this place, it just gives me so much hope for the millions out there that are still searching. I experienced a complete paradigm shift in my view towards the Iranians during my time in Turkey. I realize it's not about how the world betrays them, but it's how God sees them. Iran's like a beautiful mosaic created by God, with at least 70 different people groups and languages, and yet most of them are still unreached. I hope that this project will also inspire other people to produce and distribute media resources to share the good news with each of these people groups. Since I've been back, I've had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Daniel. He was a radical Muslim from Iran, now serving Christ internationally. I hoped he could give me some more insight on how to connect with Iranians. I believe there are um, around 200 million Farsi-speaking people in the world. Millions of them are in Western countries. The majority of them are open people. You can build friendship with them. And after that, you can freely speak about Christ to them and uh, lead them to Christ. You know, especially with today's uh, IT technology, internet, websites, and many of them in these Islamic countries, Farsi-speaking countries have access to internet. And this is a great opportunity for Christians to focus on these people. This is the way, really, we can fight terrorism, you know, or ideological terrorism, you know. These people do not want to be known terrorists. These people do not want to have any part in terrorism. And we need to help them, really, to um, uh, understand the reality of life and the values of Christ. Churches can rally behind the Iranian believers and help these people to reach out to their own nation, to prepare themselves, you know, to strengthen their media, their, their mission. And this nation is mentioned in the Bible. Prophet Daniel was the second man in Iran after the king. Esther was the queen of Iran. He's, uh, God anoints him to, you know, to do great things for the glory of God. I think this is a significant time for churches really to understand the vitality of Christ's mission to Persians. Back home, I got the opportunity to show my Iranian friend Akbar the project that I've been working on. I believe God's challenging us to step out and be a witness to them. And it can start from where we are with whatever skills we have. It's as simple as recognizing that God's already equipped us to reach out to them in so many different ways. Each one of us can make a difference. God has called this people to bring glory to His name. And throughout all of His story, His heart remains the same. How can we take a chance on all? Just